This is an incandescent lamp. Uh, an incandescent lamp works by sending electrons through a filament. The filament heats up and then sends off photons. Photons are light. So it, it's, a, it's the oldest of the technologies we're going to see. It's pretty much uh, more or less similar to what Edison came up with himself a hundred and some years ago. Um, the advantages, well, you tell me. Go ahead and hit pause and tell me the advantages of the incandescent lamp. And while you're at it, the disadvantages. All right, the advantages of the incandescent lamp is it has very high color rendition. So what's happening is all the colors that we can see are in the lamp. Because what has to happen for us to see a color, if you're wearing a handbag or a blouse or a pair of sneakers, for us to see those sneakers as amber in color, amber has to be that same color of amber, that same frequency of light has to be present in the source. So all the colors that we can see are present in the source, as they are in anything that burns, because it's kind of like a burning filament. So sunshine, a candle, a bonfire, all of it has all the colors that we can see. And so if I hold this up to it, the reds look red, the yellows look yellow, the blues look blue. Now we measure color rendering with something called the color rendering index. It goes from zero to 100. 100 is perfect, it means all the colors. It, has to, it doesn't have to do with the color that the light looks like when you look at it, more on that later. It's the number, it's the percentage of the colors that are available in the light relative to what we can see. So this lamp has a CRI of 100, just like the sun, just like a candle. Now the disadvantage, as you know, is heat. Because this little guy is kicking out about maybe 90-93% of the energy of the watts that goes into it are going out as heat. Only maybe 7% are going out as light. Now that has, uh, that, you know, that's kind of a two-headed monster. It's kind of a two-headed monster. Because on the one hand, you have a bunch of watts going in but not many lumens coming out. Lumens are the measurement of light in a source. And so we have a lot of watts going in and not much lumens coming out. And our lumens per watt is measured in efficacy. Efficacy. We want higher, more lumens per watt. That makes a more efficient light. So higher lumens relative to the watt is a higher effic efficacy level. But also, all that heat right now that's being kicked out by this guy, and it's a lot of heat. It's a lot of heat. Think about it. You ever have an e easy bake oven? And fellas, I know you have. What you want to think about is what do we use in the Easy Bake Oven to bake a cake? It's a lamp. You use a 100 watt light bulb in an Easy Bake Oven. And in a reasonable amount of time, a pretty normative amount of time, we can bake a cake. That's how much heat is coming off of a light bulb, off of a lamp that's incandescent. So incandescent light lamps, not only are a lot of the watts being wasted as heat and not coming out as light, but then we're, we're using more watts for the air conditioning system that has to cool the space that's being lit by these really hot sources. So the heat is the big disadvantage, but it's got a really high quality of light. They don't last that long, but they're very interchangeable. Anything that looks like it can screw into an Edison, Edison screw, you screw it in, it lights up, you're good. All right, now the next type of lamp we're gonna discuss you guys all know this one too. It's, an, it's a fluorescent lamp. A fluorescent lamp is a completely different technology than the incandescent lamp we just looked at. Incandescent lamps include both traditional incandescent as well as halogen. Fluorescence is a different technology. Instead of heating up a filament, we have a powder that coats the inside of a tube and then electrons come and, and an arc is created and it, it, it excites the photons, uh, excites the phosphors. The phosphors are the name of the, the powder. So these powders, in fact, I have a little example for you. This guy broke on the way um, on the, uh, when I was in transit one time. And so you can see these little phosphors on the inside of this lamp. And these phosphors kick out light at a different frequency. Each phosphor kicks out light at a different color, and the recipe of phosphors determines the quality and the type of light that's being emitted from the source. So it's a tube. It's much cooler, 
So it produces less heat for the air conditioning system to cancel out, and it has a higher efficacy. It has a higher eff efficacy because we get more lumens per watt, so it's more efficient. The quality of light is not quite as good, um, whereas the CRI was 100 for the incandescent lamp. See if you can figure out what the CRI is for this one. Go ahead and hit pause and take a guess. It varies. CRI uh, for really good uh, fluorescent lamps uh, ranges about maybe 85. For the really bad ones, maybe more like 70 or even in the 60s. The old-fashioned ones were definitely on the lower side. So uh, one of the things you need to do for your current project you're working on is specify that high CRI lamps uh, if they're fluorescents, high CRI fluorescents are put in because they're slightly more expensive, but not much more. Uh, if the contractor just sends someone out to get lamps, they're going to get the cheapest ones available. You don't want that. You want higher quality lamps uh, so that all the colors kind of sing. The, when they, uh, we redid my building, the building I work in, and everything was uh, lamped up with an 84 CRI lamp. And now that they're going out, um, they've been relamping them with the State of Virginia Standard Issue 75 CRI lamp. So the architecture studios now have less access to color. So in general, uh, uh, fluorescent lamps don't provide quite as much color. Now, we're talking about color rendering. So we're talking about the percentage of colors that are available. But you ever go in a room and you see like blue light, blue light, blue light, blue light, yellow light, blue light, blue light. Drives you nuts, right? Because um, the actual color that the lamp appears, not the CRI, not the color rendering, but the color that the lamp actually appears, that's called the correlated color temperature. See, here's how it works. We started off with incandescence. They were pretty straightforward. Once we went to fluorescence, the, t the color that it looks like, the, c the color that it emits, is a function of the different recipe, recipe, different proportions of the recipe of the different phosphors that, that are on the inside of the tube. So, if we have uh, one particular recipe, it might look more blue, and if we have another type of recipe, it might look more yellow. Back in the day, we said the things were yellow were warmer. We called them warmer because yellow reminded us of warm things, like the sun or a fire. And we called lights that look more blue or more white as cooler lamps. We said they were cooler because they reminded us of things that are cold, like the ocean or ice or the sky. But when it came time to actually replace fluorescence, once we got into fluorescent technology, we needed something a little bit more specific. You couldn't just go into a um, hardware store and say, well, it's kind of a bluish yellow. It's not too blue. It's not the bluest light I've ever seen, but it's pretty blue. That, and that really wouldn't work. You wouldn't leave the hardware store with a lamp that matched the other lamps in the, in the row. So you know how if you heat up a piece of metal, first it glows red and then orange and then yellow and then green and then blue and then white hot. So what we've done is we actually, uh, we, we correlate the temperature, we correlate the color of the lamp with the color that metal emits when it's heated up to a certain number of degrees and we measure that in degrees Kelvin. So maybe 2000 degrees Kelvin or 5000 degrees Kelvin. But here's the thing, higher correlated color temperature, 5,000 degrees Kelvin, is bluer than a lower temperature. But remember, remember, warm lights are yellower, so there's kind of a disconnect because the higher the temperature, the cooler the light. The lower the temperature, the warmer the light. Low temperature, more yellow and red, high temperature, more white and blue. So this has generally a pretty broad range of temperatures, but typically uh, a higher color temperature relative to the incandescent lamp that we saw a minute ago. Now, let's go on to our next lamp. Our next lamp is called a metal halide. Its uh, color rendition is pretty good, not horrible. It's about 0.85, I'm sorry, 85. Color rendition of 85 on a scale of 1 to 100. And uh, it produces a pretty cool light, so it has a high color temperature. 
Now this is a different technology slightly than the fluorescent. The fluorescent is a, what's called a discharge lamp. It's an older technology. The, eight, the metal halide is called a high intensity discharge lamp. It's similar but a little bit different. Instead of powders, it uses a, a, a gas. There's an arc that excites a gas and the gas sends out photons. So this guy generally lasts even longer than, 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 than this guy or the others. In general, in general, we're moving from shorter lamp life to longer lamp life. In general, we're moving from less efficient to more efficient. In general, we're moving from a better color rendition to worse color rendition. In general, we're moving from more interchangeable to less interchangeable. And in general, we're moving to, from more heat produced to less heat produced. We're also moving from more instant on to takes a while to warm up because these things, these high intensity discharges, you remember in the Super Bowl in New Orleans when the lights went out? Well, once the lights went out, they had to take a while for them to come back on because this is typically used in stadiums, big box stores, factories, car washes, gymnasiums. You see them all the time. You see them all the time. And it just takes a while to turn back on. So you wouldn't want to put this in, say, a, like a bathroom, right? You come into the bathroom, you'd have to go, you'd have to turn it on, kunk, and you'd wait five minutes to warm up, and then it would be really bright because these things are generally pretty bright. All right, let's take a look at our next lamp. Our next lamp is used for outdoor applications. It's called high pressure sodium. It's called high pressure sodium. High pressure sodium, you see, its color rendition really isn't quite as good. The yellows come out, but not so much with the blues. It actually has a CRI from 0 to 100. Well, go ahead and hit pause and you guess. The CRI, the color rendering index of the high pressure sodium, is around 20. So something on the order of 20. So not all of the colors that are available to our eyes are actually present in this light. You see this light in outdoor applications. Uh, we see it a lot in street lighting. Um, frankly, no one ever met their mate under this light. No one really looks that good. Um, but it's efficient. And importantly for street lighting, it has a very long life. We measure life, lamp life in a unit called hours. <laughs> Not a very obscure unit, right? So the incandescent has about maybe 2,000 hours. The fluorescent maybe 15,000 hours. The, the, the metal halide may be 15,000 hours also. But the high pressure sodium will last about 25,000 hours. So in general, we have used these in, we don't too much anymore, uh, more on that in a minute. But we have used these in outdoor applications because relamping uh, uh, outdoor lights that are very high up in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the air, as you might imagine, is pretty expensive. Now, its color temperature is lower. It's a warmer lamp, so it's more like, you know, maybe 2,000 degrees Kelvin. Now, all three of these lamps, all three of these lamps, the fluorescent, the metal halide, and the, um, uh, 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 the high-pressure sodium. They're all discharge lamps, so they all require what's called a ballast. Now, a ballast is a little piece of equipment that, um, uh, uh, that regulates the current. There's a starting current to get the thing going, and then there's kind of a continuation current uh, to get it uh, so it keeps going to maintain the, the lamp, uh, maintain the light. And what happens is, uh, this little piece of equipment is typically in the fixture. So in the case of like the one I showed you before, there's no ballast on this because it's in the fixture. But this is a ballasted compact fluorescent because this is intended for an Edison screw, for an incandescent screw. So there's a piece of equipment that, that is required for each of these that regulates the current. And for that reason, uh, well, first of all, that's why some of the older ones hummed. That was the ballast humming. The newer ones don't. Um, and that's also, the older ones are called magnetic ballasts, and the newer ones are called electronic. Now, in general, with the ballast, the ballast makes each one only applicable to a very specific kind of lamp. So there may be a lamp that actually screws in to here, no problem, or screws into here, no problem, but it doesn't work. And the reason that it doesn't work is, just because it screws in doesn't mean anything. The ballast has to be the same type of ballast 
that works with the lamp that screws into the fixture. All right, now the high pressure sodium that we just saw replaced another HID lamp, high intensity discharge lamp, also uses a ballast, also has a long life, also very efficient, but this is called low pressure sodium. And you'll see why it's not used anymore. It's got a CRI of zero, <laughs> or one. Because you see this is that same red, white, and blue cloth, but everything turns out gray. Nobody looks good in this light. We saw it when we were kids maybe in tunnels because it has such a long life and relamping in a tunnel and causing traffic jams is politically unpopular, but we don't see it too often anymore. Now finally, We have the newer technology, and this is a totally, just like the incandescence was one family of technology, and the discharge and high intensity discharge was another family of technology. These fluorescents are the, um, I'm sorry, these LEDs, LEDs are a totally different kind of technology. They're kind of magic. They, believe it or not, work in more or less the same way that your USB drive does. And, um, and they have several advantages. One is they have a pretty high color rendering index about 0.85, or sorry, about, about 85. So it's pretty good. Um, they produce very little heat. But the thing is, it's kind of an aside, what heat they do produce, they have a difficult time shedding because there's no radiant heat. Everything has to be through convection. So they typically have like fins like this, the heat sinks to take the heat out of the, out of the lamp and bring it to the outside. And in fact, some of you guys may have actually specified these Real, uh, with the promise that they have a very long life. And they do. They have a long life when they're correct. But if you put one of these in an existing incandescent fixture and just screw it in, the fixture itself might not be intended for an LED lamp. And so the heat that it does produce may build up inside the fixture. And this guy right here used to be much, much brighter. He's only been in there probably, he's only been in there and on for a couple of hours, maybe not even but he's dimming and dimming and dimming because these lamps, when they burn out, they just fade. They just fade. And so it's posed all kinds of problems because, uh, um, uh, for measuring because we used to, the way we typically measure how long a lamp lasts is we screw a bunch of them in a room and we turn on all the lights. Over time, half of them go out. We say that's the rated life of that particular lamp. But with these guys, they just get kind of, with the LEDs, they just kind of fade. So now we measure them based on their, uh, uh, the, how, how, much, how many hours go by before they have half their output in terms of uh, lumen output. Anyhow, the LEDs, the LEDs are, um, uh, uh, last a really long time, 50,000 hours, maybe 100,000 hours, and up and up and up. And over time, we're going to see these. They, have, they can light up any color, so their color temperature can be anything, and they produce, as I mentioned, very little heat. So as a recap, incandescent, fluorescent, metal halide, high pressure sodium, low pressure sodium, LEDs. Good color, but lots of heat, interchangeable. So-so color, not too much heat, much more efficient, fairly interchangeable, and more or less these two are instant on. These are high intensity discharge here. They take a while to turn on. And there's a fourth kind of high intensity discharge that I don't have here called mercury vapor. We don't use it really anymore, uh, but it's got a kind of a greenish hue. It was generally replaced by the metal halide here. Anyhow, these take a while to turn on. They're very efficient. They last a very long time. And this is a different technology altogether. It has to shed its heat. It lasts a very, very, very long time. And because it lasts so long, um, it's starting to replace, or it's been replacing these two for outdoor lighting because relamping and outdoor lighting, as I mentioned, is a big expense. Now, I used to say that these things are, that they, we still haven't gotten them that bright, like you couldn't light a stadium with it. And recently, uh, someone gave me an article where they are, in fact, now lighting stadiums with LEDs. So we're getting, we're, we're, the technology in those is changing like every day, every day, every day.